was already night when we arrived in Sydney and this is the view from our apartment. Our hotel room was actually really cute and cozy, as you can see. But the really strange thing, and this is the first time that I've ever seen it before, is that it only had three ceiling lights. One was right above the kitchenette area, one was in the bathroom, and one was just in the hallway. But there were no other ceiling lights. All the other lighting in the hotel was either provided by natural light coming from the sun and outside, or all the hundreds of lamps that they had set up around the place because obviously they had to but i went down the elevator to the front lobby mostly because like the vibes of the lobby were just like really good Breakfast was provided for us at the hotel and honestly this gave me such camp vibes. It reminded me of all the times that I've been on camp and honestly I really miss camp because I haven't had camp in ages. So this was actually a really fun experience for me and it made me a bit nostalgic. So then my cousin and I decided that we were going to go upstairs from the lobby and see what was really up there. So we went exploring and also fun fact, in these stairs there aren't any gaps, it's just clear glass which is really cool because someone like me is always paranoid that my foot is going to slip through them. <music> Now again, Sydney is very similar to Melbourne in terms of the relative age of everything and the way the buildings are constructed and what they look like because, you know, they're only made like 50 or so years apart. So I did enjoy walking around there and seeing everything. However, Sydney isn't exactly a pedestrian city and that's simply because of how large it is. There's no way you can get from one end to the other on foot like that. But at the same time, it's not really a vehicle city because their roads are really bad, so you can barely fit anything in them. And it's I'm not entirely sure if it's a public transport city. We didn't really have a chance to explore that there. But even if they do have a good public transport, I didn't see very many trams there. The only trams that I saw were in front of Sydney Opera House, and I don't even know where they went. So... To me, it's just a little bit odd and I am thankful of the way that Melbourne is laid out that at least it is a more pedestrian accessible city, even if it's not particularly a vehicle accessible city. And that reminds me of a comment that I read while researching for my Mystique of Melbourne series video one, um, where somebody says that Melbourne was obviously better planned and I got to see this in actuality here because the good planning of Melbourne has withstood this huge length of time. While Sydney may have been a good city to ride, I don't know, horses and carriages around and maybe it was better, 
back when it was starting that was the layout that was desired. It hasn't exactly stood the test of time because it is really difficult to navigate your way there. So Melbourne has not only got the better planning, but it's also got the longevity with it. And then we arrived at, quite frankly, the reason why I decided to come to Sydney in the first place. Well, technically this is the only reason that I was looking forward to coming to Sydney. And that is Queen Victoria Building. Now, if you've seen this building and you've seen Flinders Street Station, you're probably already connecting the dots. And yes, these buildings were made at the same time, well, in the same decade. Now the history of this, it was originally designed as a marketplace for Sydney, like the main market area, and its construction started in 1894 and it was opened to the public in 1898. It was designed by George McRae and he actually submitted four different designs for the building architecture, Gothic, Queen Anne, Renaissance and Romanesque. And obviously they went with the Romanesque styles, although I would have loved to see a Gothic market building. That would have been so cool and we really don't have that many Gothic buildings in Australia, which is kind of sad, but thank goodness they did not go with the Renaissance styles because as with everything from that period, I hate those. The building was named that in order to honour Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, and as with pretty much everything Australia did at that time, they were sucking up to Britain. They did that quite often. However, the original name was actually the Queen Victoria Markets Building, which yes, does sound very similar to Queen Victoria Market, which is the market in Melbourne, the biggest market in Melbourne, and that opened exactly two decades prior. So literally Sydney, get an original idea. Stop trying to name things like everywhere else. For example, I'm looking at you, Liverpool. Also, I'm not entirely afraid of heights. I can do pretty well on heights. The only problem that I have with heights is stable ground. I can stand on top of like the largest mountain. I could probably stand on top of a skyscraper and it wouldn't be as bad as standing in one of these shopping walls and looking down. Like these scenes were so hard to film because I physically could not get closer to the edge even though it's only like four stories. I am so scared of like little heights like this. It's insane.
Also, these little ledges under escalators in shopping malls absolutely terrify me. It's just the smallest sliver of floor that you can step on, and that is terrifying. And oddly, the floors are actually kind of slanted. I don't know why, but this is only on the bottom level, I'm pretty sure. I didn't see it on any of the other levels, but I wouldn't have noticed because they were like higher up and they had like gaps in the middle. And then we hopped on over to Darling Harbour. And it also feels like everything in Sydney is like Harbour Bridge or I guess more correctly, sales themed. As we were leaving, I saw this building and it looks like it has carpet on the outside. I know it's just the way that the concrete is, but it just looks so weird. Just watching these people up there made the tips of my fingers and my toes like tingle. That's how scary that is because I just feel like they're not on stable footing. That's not even ground. Also, if you're in the area, killer coffee. Absolutely amazing. So now a little story time. At this point, we were all split up over three cars. And our car and um, another family's car, we arrived there at 4.30. We parked our car and we went around and we were just walking around the harbour, waiting for the third car to arrive. Now, the third car actually kept getting stuck in the city. They actually never made it out of the area around Darling Harbour because each time they turned onto a road it was a one-way or it was a closed off road it had road work going on on it and other roads were just incredibly slow they were super congested you couldn't fit the car in there and then again more one-way roads and it took them an hour an exact hour to come and park their car next to ours they arrived there at 5.30. It is just plain ridiculous. And then this was my first time seeing a police boat.
past the overseas passenger terminal, so we're pretty sure this is where part of the Ruby Princess saga happens, so that is a historical place now. number of seagulls congregating on top of this fairy bathing. And that concludes day one of my holidays. There are more videos to come with the rest of my adventures, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I hope that you're having a good day.